I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Gel with Geometry Family Math Night Kit. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest collaborative project, Starry Night. So the idea for this project actually came from one of our curriculum consultants who wanted me to do something along the lines of um, Vincent van Gogh's Starry, Starry Night. And I'm not exactly sure what she had in mind, but this is what I came up with. And um, the parents loved it, the kids loved it, she loved it, so I think it was a huge success. So what I'm gonna do in this video is share with you how I did the project, and then we're gonna get into a little bit of the math and the science. Um, so basically what participants are gonna do is create and name a constellation. Um, and you're going to need to gather in advance um, the table tents. Now, um, the table tents, all the activity sheets, any templates can be found on our website at familymathnight.com under the resources hosting a family math night tabs. But I had, um, I had six of these spread out on the cafeteria tables. You're also going to um, need the stargazing apps. Actually, this is optional, but I think this is super fun. So this lists two apps for the um, Android phone and two for the iPhone. But what these are, are once you download them onto your phone, the GPS knows your location, and if you hold it up, it will show you exactly um, what the night sky looks like in your um, wherever it is that you are, and it will show you the outlines of the constellations. So super cool and free apps. You're also going to need um, tape, transparent tape, and this is for the station facilitator to put the, uh, the constellations on um, the, I, behind here is bullet black bulletin board paper, and what I did is in the cafeteria I had one wall that was filled with the bulletin board, the black bulletin board paper, and so during the event, the station facilitator would then put the constellations up all over that paper. So that's what the tape is for. Um, you're also going to need um, rulers or straight edges. I think I had about um, 15 of these spread out at the table. You're going to need um, regular pencils, and then I like to have extra um, erasers on hand if necessary. You're also going to need um, white pencils. I, I think I had 15 of these at the table, and it's really important that they're sharp. So um, I had a pencil sharpener. I used one of these portable pencil sharpeners because I didn't have easy access to an outlet. Um, but the station facilitator throughout the evening made sure that these um, pencils were sharp. You want these nice, crisp, lines um, on your constellations. Um, you're going to need glue sticks. I think I had 10 of these at the station. Um, you'll need um, protractors, and this is for the advanced activity. We'll get to that in just a minute. And then of course you're going to need your star stickers. Now I used um, glow in the dark um, stickers, okay? but you can use regular stickers as well. These work just um, fine. Um, when I got my glow in the dark stickers, it's actually a little bit more difficult um, to get them than I thought it was going to be. Maybe that's because of my price range. Um, but I did end up finding them on dhgate.com. And again, this information is in the lesson plan online. Um, it, they came in different color sheets. And let me show you. You can see that this one here, these stars here, kind of the same color as these stars down here. This is what the, the sheet is. When they when you turn the lights off and they go in the dark, they turn blue like this. Super cool. Now the actual sheets are eight and a half by 11, so they're um, a little bit bigger than this. But these are the colors that they come in and that they glow in. Um, and so what I ended up doing was getting two of each of the sheets. There's 121 stickers on each sheet. And so 121, times um, eight, so two of each of those, is 968 stickers. And I figured if each kid averaged about 10 stickers, um, that would serve 96 students. So um, I, um, it turns out that we did have some stars left over, but not many. So the calculations were almost spot on. So that will give you um, a little idea. Now each one of the sheets um, was cost just under $5. So in total, it was just under $40 in um, cost for the glow-in-the-dark 
stickers. They came from Canada there was, and there was no shipping, which I thought was great. Um, but here's the thing that you need to be careful of. It took me about three weeks to get these in the mail, which is fine if you plan in advance. So keep that in mind as um, you're getting your event together. Okay, you're also going to need um, scrap paper and your nine by 12 black construction paper. And then I made a few um, sample uh, constellations for them that I had posted um, at the station. So here's the Big Dipper. And then I made the Lion constellation. And then I just made the first uh, letter in my name. So there's a K for that. So they could see that you could do other things as well. And then the final thing that you're gonna need are the activity sheets. Now, if you're familiar with our kits, um, the stations in our kit come leveled beginning, intermediate, and advanced. So as often as I can, I like to um, uh, remain consistent with that. So I had a beginning, a uh, intermediate, and an advanced um, level at this station. And all the beginning um, activities are um, denoted in yellow. Um, green is intermediate and advanced in, is blue. Um, again, that's consistent. So um, I also, because uh, you may not be using the stickers that I use, you may be using these foil stickers. So I created some activity sheets, um, and this really only applies to the beginning level, and you'll see that in just a minute. I uh, created some activity sheets um, where I've actually um, color coordinated the words um, there uh, with the color for you. And I also have some blank ones in case it, you can fill in your own color um, stickers um, as well. So there are some options for you. Okay, so um, basically what participants are gonna be doing is creating and naming their constellation. And they're gonna do that by following the steps outlined in the table tent. So I'm gonna take you through this right now. So the first thing it says is using scrap paper, a pencil, and a straight edge, draw line segments to create your constellation. So let me show you a few that were done. I don't know how easily you can see that because it's a pencil there. But there is one um, created with line segments, and here's another one. That's the letter J, um, I'm guessing for somebody's first name. And then Look at this cute little heart. Now it wasn't done in line segments, but we're not going to be super picky about that here because um, that's, you know we're letting their creative juices flow. So if they want to do curved lines, then that's okay too. Um, so then the next step says you use the white pencil to transfer your drawing to the black construction paper. Step three is place one star at each of the intersections and end points of the line segments. So there's a little sample here to show them um, what that would look like. Um, then complete the activity sheet for your level and glue to the back of your constellation. So now you know why we need those glue sticks. Hand your constellation to the station facilitator who will use it to make our collaborative starry night. So let me show you some samples here. Here is, um, one at the beginning level, and this one's called K Palace, and I know that because it says that on their uh, activity sheet. But what I really like about this one is that um, they only used pink stickers, or pink, yeah, pink stars in this. And so on the back, the, the beginning level activity sheet has them count the number of pink um, stars, the number of light yellow stars, and the number of white stars. And let me just make a comment about that. The, um, it may be hard for you to see, but there is a subtle difference between um, the light yellow and the white. And when you're looking at them, you can kind of see that difference. And so that's how I decided what the colors were going to be for this beginning level. Obviously, when they go in the dark, they're going to be these colors, but um, they don't know that yet. Okay, so my constellation has blank white stars. My constellation has blank yellow stars. And my constellation has blank pink stars. And then of course they wrote here zero white, zero yellow, uh, zero light yellow, and seven pink. And then their equation is zero plus zero plus seven equals seven. And I wanted to show that one too because I love those zeros in there. Um, okay, so here's another example at the beginning level. And I'm sharing this one with you because it's a super cool rocket ship. And the title of the constellation is rocket ship. So. And then at the intermediate level, I love this one because this represents the state that I live in. This constellation is called California. 
And now we're getting into a little bit of beginning multiplication. So for this, the activity sheet says my constellation has blank stars. So in this case, there are seven. So my constellation has seven stars. Each star has five points. There are a total of 35 points in my constellation. And then they have to write an addition equation. So that would be five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus five plus five, plus five equals 35. And now the challenge is to turn that addition equation into a multiplication equation. And that would be seven times five equals 35, or seven stars times five points equals 35. So very cool. And then here's another intermediate one. And I'm just showing this one because this one's called Spartacus. I thought it was super cool too. Now at the advanced level, they're getting into angles. These, these students, these kind of fourth and fifth graders, um, need to know angles and angle measurements. So that's how we're gonna tie um, that math in. Now this one is done with the uh, colored foil stickers. You can see that this was actually one of my station facilitators um, was working on this before the event. Um, and so she created um, her little Theolar. This is a bear. And then she counts um, her angles there. And then what they need, so there's a total of 14 angles, and then she needs to decide um, how many of them are acute, how many obtuse, and how many are right. And that's what she puts on her activity sheet. Now there's a challenge for this level. And she just started that. Um, the event started, so I had to stop her. But she was in, and that's where these protractors come in. Okay, because now she's going to measure the angles of her, um, or using the protractor to measure the angles, and you can see she just got through three of them um, there, but that would be the challenge for this level. Now, if they forget what acute, um, obtuse, and right angle uh, means, um, at the bottom of the activity, or the um, uh, table tent, it shows them clearly there um, what those angles are um, and what they're called. Okay, so let me show you um, one at the advanced level that's completely done. Now this was done by my niece, and so that's why the page, uh, the paper is so much larger because I was actually practicing on her. So um, she created this, and she named it Athena, and at the bottom here she tells you what Athena is. Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom, was often symbolized by an owl. So if you notice that, but that is um, her owl. And so then she had to count her angles and then uh, name them. And then on the back, she did her um, angle measurements. You can do them um, on the front, um, or obviously you would need to do it with the stars on there, right? Um, or you can do them like she did it. Um, she wanted to do it on her scrap paper. So um, super cool. Okay, so that's the math. Now a little bit of the science. So a constellation um, is simply a, um, a grouping of stars. And it turns out that there are 88 officially recognized constellations in the sky. Um, 42 of them are animals, 29 of them are inanimate objects, and 17 of them are humans or mythological um, characters. And you can tell by the name of the constellation and its meaning what was important historically. Um, for example, Pyxis, um, the constellation Pyxis means mariner's compass. Um, Sagitta means arrow. Pictor means easel. And my favorite, Puppis, means poop deck. And um, I think it'd be super fun to say Puppis and poop deck in front of a group of kindergartners. Uh, but a poop deck is the um, roof of a cabin on a ship. So you can tell that um, sailing and hunting and the arts and mythology were really important um, back then. Um, it would be fun if you did this um, in, in a classroom, as a classroom activity. And by the way, all of my collaborative projects can be easily transferred um, into the classroom. But if I was doing this in a classroom, I might compare the types of constellations that my class made and what they called them to the constellations um, back in the day. Um, we had a lot of rocket ships um, at our family math night um, event. Um, it's probably something that, that they wouldn't have done um, back then. So that might be something fun 
um, to do. And by the way, technically, these aren't really constellations. Um, they're called asterisms. And that's an asterism is a grouping of, um, of stars, just like a constellation. But because they're not officially recognized, they're technically not constellations. Um, but because I officially recognize them at the Family Math Night event, um, we call them constellations. Um, so this was a super fun activity. And the best part was 10 minutes before the event was over, we turned off all of the lights and the participants got to see um, their constellations. There was a lot of ooing and aahing and then trying to find um, their particular uh, the constellation that they made. Super, super fun. So if you uh, do this activity, enjoy it.